Come here. Come here, pretty. Hello. Why am I out here? Well, it's getting kind of crazy downstairs in the review room. Jeffrey just watched all the Disney sequels. All the unneeded, desperate, seeking attention Disney sequels. You need to help? God help him. God help him. Why so many Disney sequels? And they do not stop. It's pointless. I have seen no reason for it. They're slowing down a little bit, but God. This, why? It, it's like for every single pointless Disney sequel, I have to slam my head against the wall. So how many are there? Oh God. Oh, how many more? And what, is there any more left? Oh, that piece of shit. taken 500 Advils to cure the migraine through all of these films. I can speak calmly and rationally and even acknowledge before I start ranting once again the good Disney sequels. Hear me out. First one, Rescuers Down Under. It's better than the original in every way. It ups the animation, the drama, action, character building. It's just better all around. It feels like it's moving itself forward. And it's a shame I would have seen another one. It's a shame it came out when it did and just nobody saw it. And it was just a sad thing. Because this was a Disney sequel that just deserved to be made. And there was an actual, genuine, classic effort put behind it. Next two are tied for number one spot because they both present good ideas but fall unbelievably short. Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, and Lion King 1 and a half. Lion King 2 presented some good story ideas, the fact that Zira and some other lions actually liked Scar during his role and proceeded to still follow him in his beliefs even after he had passed on and were banished. So there's this whole rivalry between the prides. So that's pretty cool. But where that falls short is with, you know, the Scar recolor of Kumu and the Simba recolor in the form of Kiara. And the attempt to replace classic songs. My Lullaby attempted to replace Be Prepared. And Yupende attempted to replace Kakuna Matata. Love Will Find a Way attempted to replace Can You Feel the Love Tonight? And they all fail. And with Lion King 1 and a half, I love the references to other movies like Fiddler on the Roof series like Mystery Science Theater 3000. Those are very funny ideas and to see Timon's origin story is kind of cool to see where he came from but he, they fall short with that by not giving Pumbaa an origin story. Adding 10-15 minutes of animation to tell Pumbaa's backstory probably would have landed this in theaters honestly but they failed to do that completely because I guess you could argue they already explained that in the original film anyway, but still would have been nice to see have that touch. Then it's a little iffy with the how it plays out where they were at certain times. Like it was like one after the other. It's just the time. It, it bugs me that obviously these things didn't happen one after the other. 
Either way, they're both still fun in their own right. Cinderella 3, Twist in Time. Just the concept alone sounds like it warrants attention. And the other decent ones are um, Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas, which, you know, it's a Christmas special, but it, it, technically it is a sequel. Not continuity-wise, because obviously it's completely different scenarios, but it brings the classic Mickey Donald Goofy characters in a CG format, and it does it well for the time it came out. It's a lot of fun, the morals are... It's a lot of fun, the morals are sweet, enduring, and all around brings the Christmas feel once more just like the first one did. Extremely goofy movie, while completely just snides aside the what happened in the first one. It's still a fun college movie, and still enjoyable. It. it is, you know, it's goofy. But you can't go wrong with goofy. Anything with Winnie the Pooh, I can't attack. I cannot attack anything with Winnie the Pooh. I mean, because these really aren't sequels, it's just, you know, individual films, and, uh, they're just adorable and very sweet, and these characters just always hold a place in my heart. Don't really warrant that Disney sequel noise. They're just Winnie the Pooh shorts slash films, and they're enjoyable. So I can't attack those. As for everything else, oh boy, I'm just going to rate and keep all these mini reviews very short and to the point. And also, the Aladdin sequel was bleh, but the third one brought in his father and some good ideas. Aladdin and the Forty Thieves storyline. That was kind of cool. And I enjoyed that. Hand of Midas and so forth. Good idea. And, well, being for a decent sequel, especially bringing back Robin Williams. Rest in peace. But now, let's begin. The Return of Jafar. Just without Robin Williams and just with down-to-earth blah animation, it just doesn't warrant being a good sequel. It was m probably meaning to be a made-for-TV movie, but they just ramped up into an action. It, it's only a step above the TV series animation, and it just probably should have stayed within the TV series as like a bonus um, four episode arc of Jafar returning. That would have worked better that way. But as is, trash. Beauty and the Beast and the Enchanted Christmas. Other than the song, As Long As There's Christmas, a song by Belle, which is a beautiful song, and Tim Curry's performance as the organ player. I don't even bother with it. And Belle's Magical World, just. Eh. Just an excuse to see our favorite characters again, but with no context of being any sense of good. Pocahontas 2. The first film was already underwhelming as it is. Why would you make a sequel to this other than just to try and attempt to justify yourself how accurately historic you're being when she meets up with this other dude other than John Smith? I know it's... they were trying to have some sort of respect for themselves by portraying on screen what actually happened in real life. But it, for a Disney movie, and if any little kids liked the relationship between John Smith and Pocahontas in the first film, are just crushed now. Because you're just like, oh no, they're not together, it's just this other dude. Oh, And the animation is just garbage. Again, garbage. You'll be hearing less a lot. Next. I'm just gonna go ahead and just put Little Mermaid 2 and 3 in the same spot. <laughs> Don't. Not even any words, just a sound effect. <laughs> Next. Cinderella 2, dreams come true. Just three shorts based on Cinderella and just giving these other characters these arcs and you know, emotions of character building, but just pointless. Pointless. And it's not even a smooth narrative. It's not a single film. It's just three separate stories that should have just been released as three separate Cinderella shorts. Which that probably could have worked if they released it with like different different movies. But nope. Next. The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. Just 
why would you make a sequel to this? The film ended perfectly with the moral of accepting others and finally being accepted by society. The only reason this film was made was to give Quasimodo a girlfriend. That is the only reason and it's pointless. 101 Dalmatians 2 Patches London Adventure. Why? Why this specific Dalmatian? Why why his adventure? Why not um Spooky Pookie's adventure? Why not Dingleberry's adventure? Why not I wipe my butt on the rug while scooting along adventure? Why not I peed on the hydra and the tree and the bed all at the same time adventure? Next. Okay. And some sequels just don't bother any merit because the first film ended on such a climatic and perfect note. Like Mulan 2 and Brother Bear 2. There is no reason for this other than, again, to give the comedy relief love interests. Moving on. mid quills anger me the most. Tarzan 2 and Bambi 2. These two, just take your copies, toss them down the toilet, piss, shit, throw up, all over them, and then just flush and just watch them go away where they belong. Deep in the sewers of nonsensical, pointless sequels that are completely redundant. Fox and the Hound 2, another mid -quel. but you wasted the voice talents of Reba McIntyre and all these great country singers just for this stupid mid -quel that just doesn't warrant even being made. Atlantis 2. Milo's return. <laughs> Just God, bring this crappily animated sequel. And this didn't even have an animated TV series to follow up the grandeur of Atlantis that brought us these unforgettable characters and great sense of discovery. And you just said, hey, let's just throw this together. Just basically a bunch of subplots for an AMA TV series, again, just spliced together to make a film. Just... Ah! Other than the sequels that I actually did wind up enjoying, my final score for all these sequels, I'm just gonna throw it across the board and give them all, all together, a 4 out of 10. Because a few of them horribly animated. Some of them decently animated. And some of them can did rival the animation of the previous films, but that's only because some of the movies are so freaking old, Fox and the Hound and so forth, that the sequel does emanate much better animation. But as is, there's just really no point in checking any of these out. So that begs the question, why do any of these exist? Because the fans wanted to see their favorite characters again and that is the only reason and the only merit for any of these existing the other reason is that disney knew this and wanted to exploit the living fuck out of us hey we'll make all these sequels and then we'll just take all your money money and we'll let you enjoy the show and they come <coughs> god i've calmed down this has been a way fast review we'll see you next time on team epic force i am never doing that again.